Holy Baby Yoda, I just added up the total estimated cost of Loki, and there's a little part of me now that kind of wants to to vomit comment, just just a little bit. What's up YouTube, Jason here with By My Bits, and in today's video I am unveiling or explaining or, or showcasing what Loki is all about. The final build and some thoughts that I've had along the way and also my final thoughts as far as what my plans were and other things like that. Okay, so as you've probably been following along, I've been building my new home media server, Plex Media Server Loki. Now, as it currently sits, it is a Ryzen 3900. And then my whole idea was, I'm gonna build this new system, I'm gonna use a Ryzen 3900X uh, just temporarily until Threadripper comes out. But then Threadripper came out, and then now they've got another Threadripper coming out in January or February, and it's probably gonna be 3500 uh, dollars to four thousand dollars. So now I'm kind of second guessing my original plan because you know cost, and I really kind of want to use that as a main workstation computer, the new Threadripper, not the. 3900 that's in there now. So my final build right now, don't make fun of me, it's only 284 terabytes. I've been on this quest to reach 300 terabytes. I figured with 30 drives, I could do 300 terabytes with my mix of 12s and 10s that I have in there. I was so close, but yet so far away. 200 and 84 terabytes. Yes, I'm only using 87 terabytes of it currently, but I plan on filling that up at some point. So 300, that was like my goal. I was sitting there thinking, man, all I need is that three, just a nice even round number. Instead, I got 284 and I'll tell you why. And the reason is because when I was replacing four terabyte drives with 12 terabyte drives, it still, it felt good. Like that was like, that's a decent gain, you know, for the money. But when I got to the last eight terabyte drives, I replaced one eight terabyte drive, but that was painful because you only gain four when you replace an eight with a 12. So it's like you go out and buy a whole 12 terabyte drive and you only gain four terabytes out of it. It's a little painful. I still have four of those drives to replace. And if I did replace those, I would take my 284 up to 300 and I'd have my nice round number. But instead, I decided to take that money and build a mini server. So if you haven't seen that, it's actually a Ryzen 3700X miniature server. It's like this big, it's amazing, it's super powerful. It runs a P2000. I used you know, that fund to build that little miniature server because I wanted to make a build thing. Also, I'm gonna repurpose that from an Unraid server probably into a Windows streaming PC for the studio. So, you know, there's that. I wanted to build another server slash computer and that's where I am now. But aside from the storage at 284 terabytes, I know I had to flex it again. It is a Ryzen 3900X system with 32 gigabytes of DDR4 3200 megahertz RAM. It's currently running the motherboard that I originally uh, thought I was just gonna use as a test bench, the Meg Godlike MSI motherboard. It has a one 1.6 terabyte SSD from Intel that's running my cache, which actually, thank you to the user, the insane one, sent me this for free, had it laying around. He's like, dude, this will be awesome for your cache, and it is. I'm using it currently, it is awesome. But on top of that SSD, I have two 500 gig Samsung SSDs. They're just Evo, regular 2.5 inch SSDs. I use one for the Plex data uh, information, like the Plex metadata, poster art, stuff like that. And then the second one, I'm actually, I'm in the process of transferring all the data from an old Intel 160 gig SSD, which is like VM information, because I was running Windows and some other VMs off of it. So I'm in the process of transferring that data off. So it is temporarily in my server because I just haven't got to that transfer process yet. But I will be taking that old Intel SSD out of Loki and just using two Samsung Evos. And then for the crowning achievement, which I just kind of sort of just added tonight and gave me a little bit of a scare because it didn't boot initially, is the Quadro RTX 4000. Now I replaced my P2000 that I had in there originally because of one, I wanted to use the P2000 in my mini server build. And two, I was like RTX 4000, it handles more codecs, it can transcode more things uh, as far 
far as like the ability to transcode to where it doesn't just, you know, shift it to the CPU because it can't handle the color or the bits or anything like that. So the RTX 4000 is technically more capable in terms of compatibility than the P2000 is, but I haven't really had a chance to thoroughly test it to see what kind of potential transcoding gains I get from the P2000 to the uh, RTX 4000. I didn't actually expect much. I just expected more compatibility with, you know, the different codecs and stuff, but I am probably thinking I'm gonna get maybe a 10 to 15% increase in transcodes. I won't know for sure until I actually have a, a chance to sit down and test it thoroughly and see if I can find a way to test more than like, what was it, 28 streams I got with the P2000. Now you might be asking yourself, Jason, was it worth it to get an RTX 4000? I will tell you, probably not. It was like $880 and it, I just don't think I'm gonna gain a ton from that purchase. Realistically, the RTX 5000 with way more RAM would have been a lot more useful uh, just because it can handle more RAM, thus being able to handle more 4K transcodes just because of that. But things like 2,600 bucks and it's totally not worth it, especially for my use in Plex. I mean, there's that little clout thing where you're like, I got this awesome server with this awesome GPU and then there's like, that's way too expensive, that's dumb. Don't do that, Jason, that's dumb. So look for that video about the RTX 4000 at some point, you know, definitely next decade because I'm not gonna get it in before CES. Either way, I'm gonna work on that and check out that car to see exactly how good it is and whether or not it was definitely worth it. I don't think it is. Seriously, if you're building this, a P2000 or something comparable is more than enough, probably. Now I bought the server case off of eBay. Again, if you haven't watched the powder coating video, definitely check that out. Uh, I actually took it to a local powder coating company and paid them a decent chunk of change to turn it completely matte black. And it came out looking amazing. I bought a sticker for it. I, I mean, I think it just looks sexy. I'm just gonna throw that out there. This server is sexy, especially with the sticker and just being all matte black. I mean, it's just, I like it. It looked, it turned out amazing. Was it worth all of the money? That's debatable, but I mean, it looks good. I'm struggling with this because, you know, I added it all up and um, well, I'll get to that in a second. So again, as you've seen in the previous video, Noctua actually did hook me up with some fans. They got me uh, 620 millimeter fans that slid right in. It brought the overall volume of the server down. Yes, the fans were 2000 RPMs versus the stock 3000 RPMs. No, they do not move as much air as the stock ones, but they are much quieter. And my idle temps for all of my hard drives are around 36 to 38 degrees Celsius and under load temps when I'm doing something like a parity rebuild, I'm getting like 42 to 44 degrees Celsius. So it does run maybe a little hot when it's doing a parity, but it's nothing that I'm really worried about, especially because Zeus actually, when it was doing a parity rebuild, the hard drives ran a little bit hotter and they've done that for a long time and I haven't had a hard drive failure once, knock on wood. For a SAS controller to connect to the two back planes that came with my case, I actually bought an LSI 9300 8i. That's a 12 gigabit per second SAS card off of eBay. That's like 150 bucks right there, but it did consolidate two cards that I was using and it gave me more bandwidth and I was able to basically get the bandwidth of two cards that I had originally. So I forgot what the other ones, I think those were the 8300s and I just got one card and now it handles everything. And now I actually severely think I'm limited by the speed of the backplane. So overall, when I'm doing the parity rebuild, I get like 3.5 to 3.3 gigabytes per second uh, total bandwidth being used throughout all the hard drives, which is comparable to the speeds I was seeing with Zeus. I'm definitely at kind of a limit as far as what the backplane can handle. So even though my new case can handle 48 drives and Unraid can only use 30 of those, I know that I do have 48 drives that I could use and I could possibly throw more drives in there for other things. I just don't know if I will. I think that I needed one in more than 24 drives, which is what Zeus had but I don't really need 48 drives. I'm just kind of at this thing where I have 30 drives in there now and I'm kind of comfortable where it is. I, I just don't need anything else. Terabyte addiction is real folks. Trust me, it sucks. But once you get to that end game, you're like, that was dumb. And I should mention that the godlike motherboard that I was using came with a 10 gigabit uh, per second copper NIC, which means that I can just use regular ethernet cables, get a 10 gig connection directly from my server to my main computer, which has a built-in 10 gig NIC. Currently, I just have a direct highway. It's set up on, on its own subnet where anytime I read and write anything from the server from my main computer, it uses the 10 gig connection and anything else for the server, it uses the regular one gig connection. However, I have purchased a 10 gig switch that's coming in before Christmas and it's all copper. Okay, it has four SFP ports, but it's 24 copper ports. 
And I'm kind of excited about that because that's going to be a huge network upgrade, huge in terms of like the few computers that can actually use it, but it's huge for future potential things. I just have this problem with things like upgrading stuff that I don't need. So that's coming soon. We'll expect that video, just not yet. The only thing I don't like about this build is Unraid's support with Ryzen. And if anyone has figured this out, please let me know in the comments down below. I cannot figure out a way to monitor the Ryzen 3900X chip or really anything as far as temperature goes in Unraid. I've installed the plugins, the Dynamex temperature monitor. It just doesn't work. It will not detect any sensors. It does not know what the temperatures are on, on the Ryzen chip or anything. And that is, I mean, it kind of sucks because I want to be able to see what the, temp the temperatures are, but I know it's just like an Unraid slash actually Linux thing. I just, I, I wish that worked. If anyone has a solution to that, please let me know down below because I would love to get that working. So what was I talking about before about the Threadripper? Threadripper came out and I was waiting for that to come out. And then when it came out, they're like, uh, basically there's two more better ones coming out in January or February. And although I thought it would be fun to spend the Threadripper money and make it as a Plex Media server, I had this idea where I was like, I'm gonna run a VM and like run an Adobe encode server. And basically I would be able to edit my video and then send it to, the, to Zeus and then it would be able to compute and, and, and encode everything. And then I wouldn't actually have to worry about it bogging down my main workstation. But then I really kind of thought, it's like, that's a special use case that takes extra setup. And then it takes my RTX 4000 away from Plex, the Plex Media server, because you can only really assign it to one thing at a time. And I was just sitting there thinking to myself, you know, Maybe if I'm gonna spend Threadripper money, I should use Threadripper as my daily driver. Because realistically, I mean, let's be real here, I'm gonna use my workstation, my main computer, way more than I would, you know, encoding a video file on, on Loki. So I think it just makes sense. It does kind of make me want more RAM because I went with 32 because it was a test bench type of deal and I, I kind of want 64 at least, just so I can allocate things to VMs and not suffer uh, RAM wise. So that might be an upgrade path in the future but I don't know for sure. I do know that I'm gonna hit that 300 terabyte mark. I know that's gonna be a thing. I don't know when, but you know, at some point, probably after CES, I'm gonna, it's gonna be a thing. And this is where we come to the painful part, and that's where I was like, you know, Jason, if I were me watching me, I'd wanna know how much did this server cost to build total? Maybe not all at once, but as it sits right now, what is the cost? And this was another factor in like, you know what, I'm not gonna throw Threadripper in there, it's already cost too much. So total estimated cost, now keep in mind, there's a lot of little things like power adapters and, and little things that I purchased that I'm not rolling into this or I'm, I'm kind of estimating. But the total cost for just the, the hardware, I'm talking like the case, the motherboard, the CPU, uh, the RAM, etc. The total cost for just the hardware and the paint and that stuff was $4,800 ish. I kind of rounded down just a little bit on that estimate, but it's about 4,800 bucks. But of course, Loki has 30 hard drives. It's a mixture of like four, eight terabyte drives, a bunch of 10 terabyte drives and a bunch of 12 terabyte drives. So on an average cost without tax being about 170 ish dollars per hard drive, because some are more expensive than others, that's a total of $5,100 worth of hard drives that's in the system right now. So you take that, you add the $4,800 and I have $9,900. So basically 10 grand because I rounded down and I didn't really calculate tax on hard drives. So with tax, it's well over 10 grand and that is a painful number to say. And I have a few regrets, I think, about the cars you could buy with 10 grand and I built a server. So with that number in mind, Knowing what I threw into Loki, total, hard drives and everything, I think it's good. For my usage, for what I do on the server, I feel like it's good. Aside from hitting the 300, maybe adding some more RAM, I think Loki's good where it is. I definitely wanna get into a Threadripper build, but I'm pretty sure I'm gonna use that as a main workstation. So there you have it, Loki. A $10,000 Unraid server that could probably handle at least 30 uh, 1080p transcoded streams. I haven't tested it thoroughly yet, but it should be at least 30 streams easily. I know that recording this final video, like I try to get some footage and install things and, and show showcase a lot of stuff, but it was kind of a cluster as far as trying to get that, that final build and deciding on the final hardware and thinking to myself, you know, do I want to hit 300 terabytes before I hit the video? Do I want to wait for Threadripper before I finalize the build? You know, there's a lot of questions that are floating in the air. Also, you know, going with the RTX 4000 over the P2000, that was another last minute move. So, you know, there's a lot of things floating in the air, 
But uh, here we are. Hopefully you guys enjoy the server. Hopefully you guys enjoy the ride. It should last me for a very long time. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments down below. Thank you for following the journey. Like and subscribe and have yourself a great day.